It was easy peasy, never hesitate, don't stall. Yep, 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 yep. And if life was a game with the game on the line, then pass on the ball. Yep, 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 yep. Yesterday, I decided to put my trust in you. Our God is higher than any other. Our God is higher than any other. Storm in the cash of life. This a new radical life. We're not only changing the way people look at church, but the way that they look at faith and humanity. All right, so first start, first start. Check this out. Uh, I want to let you guys know uh, we are having prayer every Monday at 5 a.m. The Zoom link will be in the description below. I just want to let you know we're having prayer on Mondays at 5 a.m. And we used to have it at uh, 7 p.m. Um, but I want us to actually like get this prayer in like at the top of the morning. I know it's going to be tough for some people. OK, but 7 o'clock was tough for some people. So, you know, it don't even matter. Every Monday morning at 5 a.m. We're going to be praying um, over the word that was that was preached um, on Sunday over the visions and the callings on our lives individually, as well as collectively. And um, I need you guys there. Like, I want you to be a part of what we do and who we are. There was something incredibly important that um, one of my favorite people said. Her name is uh, Carol Shiraz. She said, you can always tell uh, the strength of someone's ministry by the people who show up for prayer. So I want us to be able to show up to pray over each other, to pray over our homes, to pray over our ministry, to pray over the things that we do and who we are. Every Monday morning, 5 a.m. Can't wait to see you there. We need you. This is the FSC Global. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Welcome to the FSC Global, your mobile, your digital pit stop, changing the way that we see faith and humanity. Week number three. Yeah, week number three. Week number three. So, so excited. Uh, this series called Practice. It's, it's, it's easy to, to, to talk about. It's easy to sum it up. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about practice. Not a game, not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Oh, all right. So these last two weeks of, of practice uh, have been very, very uh, tough. They've, they've been pretty, pretty tough. They, they've always also also been pretty enlightening as well um, with us practicing patience, with us practicing presence. That's my big one. OK, that's my big one. Um, working on it this week. We're going to practice something a little different. OK, so turn in with me in your Bibles to Matthew 23. OK, last two weeks. Old Testament this week, New Testament, Matthew 23. We'll start, we'll start, actually, we'll start at the beginning of, of the book. Let's see here. And it says, then Jesus said to the crowds. Oh, I'm from the ESV version. So good. Um, <laughs> then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do, for they preach, but do not practice. Ha! I bet you could probably guess what we're going to be speaking from today. Today's subject we'll be speaking from is practice what you preach. Father God, thank you. Uh, 
Thank you for shining a light on us um, when we didn't believe we had any light, Father God. Thank you for always uh, being that calm, still voice, um, not only in the midnight hour, but in the time of complete chaos. We thank you for this word that we're about to receive today, and we thank you for just you being you in our lives, doing the things behind the scenes that you always do that we can't even number. So we love you, we honor you, we need you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yeah, so check this out. Everybody has heard the term, practice what you preach, or another way of saying it is uh, take your own advice, right? We've all heard these terms before where we are telling someone, hey, these things that you are saying, they cool, like they real, real cool. But uh, for me to fully believe, I'm going to need you to be doing what you telling me to do. Practice what you preach. And as much as we love to criticize people for not practicing what they preach, we're starting to figure out why it is always so difficult for that to happen. Check this out. I personally believe uh, words are probably the most powerful things for us on this planet. I mean, these are the, these are things that God used to create light, create the heavens, create the earth with his words. And what is so interesting that is as powerful as they are, they're actually only as powerful as the action that ensues afterwards. So what if God said, hey, let there be light and nothing happened? Hmm. It, it's so it's so interesting that if God were to say, hey, create the heavens and the earth and everything just stayed still, we start to question how powerful are these words that are coming out of your mouth? Is it possible that a lot of times our words have no power is because there is no action that comes afterwards? Like, just 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 think about it. When we say words out of our mouths, especially words when we know in our minds we have absolutely no way that we're going to actually do the things that we're saying. The more we say that thing, it doesn't get stronger because the spirit inside of us is saying, I'm not doing this. This is how we get these arguments between generations about practicing what you preach, about being uh, people of your word, and about taking your own advice. This is particularly why there are so many single people who refuse to listen to other single people. This is why we have so many people, uh, so many people who are trying to get fit who will not listen to somebody telling them to get fit when they're just as out of shape as they are. There is a huge discrepancy between words and actions. Now, for so long, we have been uh, convinced that words and actions are separate entities that do not go together. You know, some people say, oh, if you, gonna, if you love me, you got to show it. And some people say, I just need you to say that, I, I, that you love me. There is a huge possibility and it actually makes the most sense where these two things go together. The word and action in word and in deed. Hmm. Hey, we all know that. You know who also knows that? Jesus. OK, so in, in the text um, in Matthew 23, uh, Jesus, this is the last day of Jesus's freedom. Like later on that night, he's being taken captive. So this is his last day. This man been going in all morning. He woke up, killed the fig tree, started uh, offending leaders in the temple. Like he's going in. He's getting everything out because he know his time is coming, right? So he's with his disciples. He's talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. And actually he's talking to a multitude of people. Multitude, it's a, it's a word that's used a whole lot in, in, the, uh, in the Gospels. Because that's what that's what Jesus be talking to, like multitudes of people. <laughs> but he's speaking to all these people and he's telling them, listen, these scribes and Pharisees, they are your leaders. OK, they sit in Moses, seat. When Moses was uh, getting the people out of Egypt, they he was their leader. He was the children of Israel's leader to be treated with respect, to be followed, because this is the person who's getting the word from God. 
So he's saying, listen, they sit in Moses' seat. So what they tell you to do, please do them. Please observe the things that they are saying. Because the things that they are saying to do, they're not exactly lying about. The thing that gets really mixed up is the things that they're telling you to do, they ain't doing. They tell you to love, love your neighbor, love your people, and they're burdening their people and their, neighbor, they, their neighbors with taxes. They tell you, hey, love one another, look out for one another, and they're being the main people who are burdening these people. They say, help your fellow man, and they don't lift a finger to help someone themselves. Huh, that is big. Yet, they want to tell you, you know, the Jews and the Gentiles and the regular folk who don't get paid as much as they do, uh, they tell them, hey, but do these things, and you must do these things because this is the word from God. Wow. Question for us. How strong is our word when the words that we say we do not do? Ah, this kicked me in the face like a while ago. So when I, uh, when me or my wife uh, get a job from school, first thing he does when he comes in the house is he sits on his, his, he sits on his little trampoline and he takes his shoes off and then he takes his socks off. He puts his shoes in, uh, in the corner, put them over there like nice and neat, put the socks aside, the shoes. Then he go, he, then he go on about his business, probably go to go eat something or something like that. So what's interesting is before the dis uh, before this was happening, when he would come home, I would say, Ajay, take your shoes off. Cool. He, I know he heard me, but he walked in the house with his shoes on anyway. Okay. The next day, I'm like, Ajay, take your shoes off. He just going on about his business. He acting like he can't hear. I know he can hear me. Bro, I am him. I am you. <laughs> so like. Maybe almost like a week go by. I'm like, why is this boy not taking his shoes off when he gets when he come in the house? And so one day I'm coming home from the grocery store. Right. I come in and I got the bags in my hand. I put the bags down on the table and I go on about my business. And what happens is my wife, Khadija, she's like, uh, James, take your shoes off. I said, oh, oh, one thing I have recognized with having a five-year-old son, <laughs> he will not listen to what I say. He will always do what I do. Every single time. He won't listen to what I say until he sees me do the thing that I'm telling him to do. If I say, hey, Ajay, it's time to pray. Will he pray if he's never seen his father pray? No. Said Ajay, take your shoes off. Will he take his shoes off if he's never seen his father take his shoes off? No. Said Ajay, clean up after yourself. <laughs> Are we in trouble now? <laughs> Will he clean up after himself if he's never seen his father, his daddy, his leader do that? Absolutely not. And this isn't just for people who are in leadership positions. These are just for people who other people can see. We see each other talk. We also see each other do, or lack thereof. And Jesus is telling uh, the multitude of people along with his disciples, because we got to make sure the disciples hear this too. He's telling these people, yo, listen, um, I know that these are your leaders, and you shall respect them as such. Do not ever lose respect for your leaders. But one thing I need you to do, don't do what they do, because they're not following the word of God. Like, and he's saying this in front of all of these people. The Pharisees and the scribe can see him. They can hear him. You know they mad. You know, you know that they're mad. But Jesus is doing this because he know his time is limited. He about to be gone at, after the end, of the end of the night. And so he's telling them this because he needs them to be able to follow what the word of God says, even if their leaders don't do it. I need you to have compassion for people, even if your leaders don't do it. 
I need you to take care of people even if your parents don't do it. I need you. Okay, I like I need you to love people as if you love me, even if the people who are leading you aren't doing that adequately. Yikes. That's crazy. Jesus is saying, even though the people who are leading you do not practice what they preach, I need you to. I need you to start this new footprint in this new world by practicing something that you keep talking about. Cause bro, we know how to you do you know how many podcasts there are out right now? Okay? I wish there was a number, because if there was a number, it'd be big. It's a everywhere you turn, there is a podcast. And that's not a bad thing. Because a lot of these conversations can happen, should happen, need it in, in the world that we live in. But check this out. With all of all of the things that we say, whether it's in the podcast, conversation, newsroom, uh, movies, music, whatever it is, a time is going to come where the things we say, we're going to have to back up. Yo, check Jesus' track record. Like, go all the way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, like, synchronize all the Gospels. Every step and everything that Jesus would say, he did. <laughs> Bro, and I know, I know it is tough. It has never been harder than now to actually practice what you preach. Here's why. There are people who get paid thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars to practice what they do not preach. How many sports analysts have you seen or heard who have never played sports? How many movie critics have you heard or seen who has never made a movie in their lives, who have never acted in their lives? How many people have you seen talk about something that they've never done? Wow. You know, Jesus is like, hey, I know they're your leaders. Follow your leaders. Respect your leaders. But there's going to come a point in time. There's, there's going to come a day where you're going to be the leader. Question, will you be the same type of leader that led you in the wrong direction? Or will you do something different? That, that, I think that's a, that's a tough question for us because the things that we do automatically, we've been convinced that they're the right things to do. So actually, like, not practicing what you preach is normal, so it's okay. We have gotten to a place where things become okay because they're done in perpetuity. Because they're done all the time. Because now where they're when they're done, nobody's talking about them like they're wrong. They're just accepted now. Wow. Okay, yo, check this out. All right, I'm going to give you all three minutes. Here's what I want you to do. Oh, this about to be, this about to be crazy and hurtful. So check this out. Here's what I want you to do. Get yourself something to write on, write with, or in your phone, whatever, however, however you do it. And I want you to list out. All of the things that you talk about that you don't actually do. This is about you, okay? I'm going to write mine down too. List out all of the things that you talk about that you don't do. Oh, this is about to be good. I'm going to have to write down basketball. <laughs> Three minutes. Go.
Mm. All right, so if you if your list is long, woo! <laughs> Check this out. This list that we've made is, is so important because there's a personal accountability that comes with practicing what you preach. Because it's easy to look at other people and see what they're not practicing in the things that they preach about, in the things that they talk about all the time. It's easy to do that. It's not so easy when we're put up against a mirror that shows us all the things that we say, talk about, preach, that we're not actually doing. See, after, um, after Jesus says what, uh, his little spiel about the um, Pharisees and the scribes not practicing what they preach, he begins this thing called the seven woes, right? And he is saying all the things that were wrong with the scribes and the Pharisees as a bond, like as, a, as leadership that is, it can't be tolerated no more. What he's doing is he's holding them accountable for the things that they did not the things that they said. That it's, it's so amazing how throughout this entire uh, beratement, like Jesus is going in on these scribes and Pharisees right now. Out of this whole thing, he never congratulates them on saying what the right thing was, was to do to the people. He never does that. He does not care about these scribes and Pharisees preaching. Doesn't care about it at all. He's going down the line for all the things that they did. Oh, and when he when he's giving these woes, he is reminding them of all the things that they've done that completely contradict what they say. Whew. The list that's in front of us of the things that we talk about that we do not do is a human reflection and an accountability to us to make sure we do not end up like the scribes and the Pharisees. It is so easy to parent in saying, do what I say and not what I do, when the reality is our children will always do the opposite. Always. Whew. Out of everything I've ever learned in my childhood, the things I do now as an adult was never the things that my parents told me to do. It was always what I watched them do. As scribes and as Pharisees and as leaders, these people were leading <clears throat> the Jews and the Gentiles in a manner that Jesus was not comfortable with. So on his last day as a free man in the afternoon, he's telling them, hey, I get it. If they say to do something, do it. That's right. But don't do what they do. Please. Don't do what they do because the things that they're doing is the complete opposite of what they're saying to you. <sighs> In order to practice what we preach, the thing that we're going to need the most of is honesty. Like a complete honesty. Like, you know, most people hate liars. Did you know that? Did you know that? Most people just loathe liars. But who holds you accountable for lying to yourself? Do you know why most of us hate liars? We hate to be deceived. We hate to made to look stupid, especially in public. But if we lie to ourselves in private, we ain't got too much of a problem with that. <laughs> Jesus is holding these scribes and Pharisees to such an accountability that they're pretty much translucent in front of the people. They are completely see-through. Man. Like, just imagine if someone can look at you right now and they see through all of the things that you say and all they see is a complete version of you by your deeds by your actions, by the things that you have done. How comfortable would that make you? You got it in your head? That's how the scribes, that's how the scribes and the Pharisees feel right now. But check it. Transparency is not a negative thing. Like just imagine if the people who could see you, all of you, were trustworthy. 
Like, just think about that for a second. Our lack of trust for our fellow man has never been higher than now. Because people hide from, dang, people hide from everybody now. They hide from the people they love. We we hide from uh, people seeing the full and authentic parts of ourselves that we want nobody to see. When the truth of the matter is, the moment these people see it, we lose all the fear, anxiety, and worry about being seen. You ain't got to act no more. Jesus was giving the scribes and the Pharisees a gift. Like, throughout the entire gospel, Our mentality as consumers of the Bible was that Jesus and the scribes and Pharisees were enemies. That is not true at all. Jesus was sent to also free the scribes and the Pharisees. What he was giving them was a type of transparency that would set them free. That would give them such a liberty that they didn't have to fake like they knew everything all the time. That they didn't they wouldn't have to fake like they had everything put together, that they didn't have to fake like they were some top tier of society when they weren't. Bro, Jesus came to break a cycle, a cycle that the scribes and the Pharisees were a part of. But if you think about it, the scribes and the Pharisees were only a part of it because that's what they were taught to do by watching the people that came before them. Practicing what you preach is a lot less about you and so much more about what comes after you. Because the more we go about life not practicing what we preach, then the things that replicate us, the things that we replicate, it will look nothing like what we intended. Let's say we intend to positively affect the world by letting, letting them know the gospel of Jesus Christ. But then generations go by and then all you have are people who resent church. What happened in that middle area? We stopped practicing what we preached. We stopped being authentic. We stopped being transparent. Practicing what you preach is a tall order for all of us. But we can get it done in action at a time. It ain't got to be the whole thing at once. One action at a time. Like, man, I be telling people that they need to read every day. I ain't read in like three weeks. Start practicing what you preach. Like, man, I be be telling people to to calm down and to not lose their temper. And I just went off. I just went off on somebody. Start practicing what you preach. I tell people that they can do anything they put their minds to. And I'm scared to take the first step to mine. Practice what you preach. Father God, you are holy. Righteous, good, masterful, brilliant, genius. Help us to be able to practice the things that we talk about the most. In this uh, this season of sharpening and, and sharpening the iron that we have, the gifts and the talents and the, the callings that we have and sharpening those things, help us to practice it every day, one step at a time, being able to practice what we preach so that we don't turn into the complete contradiction that we've always seen. Help us to not become the things that we say we hate the most. Yeah. (laughs) That's crazy. Lord, we're thankful for your patience with us. We are. We're we're incredibly thankful for your patience with us. We're thankful that you would choose us at this point in time to do the things that you've called us to do, to be able to practice your word and practice the things that we preach and practice the callings on our lives in real time. Help us to be uh, activators and action takers to the amazing words that you have over our lives. Help us to combine word and deed in the direction that you called us in. (laughs) Yeah, we love you. Um, We definitely need you. And we're in awe of you. 
in uh, the type of love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, listen, we love you. God loves you so much more. Go out there and create something. Oh, and listen, there is a, a link in the description. Uh, we have changed our prayer time. So now on Monday mornings at 5 a.m., we're going to be doing prayer. Okay, we're going to be praying over the callings on our lives. We're going to be praying over the visions that we have, especially uh, everybody who went to the vision party. Shout out to y'all. Listen, we're getting these things done this year. And each morning, Monday morning, each Monday morning at 5 a.m., we're going to be praying over it. The Zoom link is in the uh, description. And, yeah, you just click on it. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Yeah. Woo! Jesus, we... This is the FSC Global.